Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Taking a look outside with live cam, you can see those clouds lingering as we had some really loud storms last night. But Sarah Spivey says things are clear now. The sun will be out today and it's going to be beautiful just in time for the cattle drive. Good morning. It's February 3rd. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Sarah, you had a busy night last we night. We had a lot of rain last night around San Antonio. Here's the thing, though. We still got a few lingering showers. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look out at the radar right now. I want to show you the showers that are falling in northwestern Bear County and up into Kendall and Comal County as well. This is it for the rain around San Antonio. Once this is out of here, we are not going to see any more rain this weekend. A few showers near Leon Springs, Bernie, uh, out toward Kendall. Dahlia and near Canyon Lake and Fisher. Now, while these are not producing any lightning, they could potentially be producing something called grout bowl. Now, grout bowl is basically soft little ice that is falling. It originally starts as snowflakes, but then starts to melt. We've seen some indication of this. You can see on the stairs here a little bit of that potential grout bowl out near the Stone Oak area. So maybe a bit of a wow factor, but it's far too warm at the surface to see any kind of impacts from that grout pole. It's just kind of like, wow, it, you can see that the snow originated from up there. Otherwise, it is just showering in those areas and the rest of us are seeing clearing skies. 70 degrees today for the high breezy with gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be 45 and windy. We'll be looking at wind gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour with a high temperature right around 68. So all in all, a beautiful weekend for us after this brief period of rain. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how much rain fell in your neighborhood coming up in just a bit. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says five officers shot at a man who shot at officers after a domestic disturbance on the city's southwest side last night. McManus says SAPD responded to a call to a home in the 100 block of Carranza around 1030 last night after a man got into an alleged altercation with a woman and her 18 year old son. The chief says then at some point the man picked up a gun when police arrived. The woman and her 18 year old son and three children that were also in the home were able to get out unharmed. Police began to negotiate with the man inside and to drop the gun. But that's when McManus says the suspect fired at officers. At some point during those negotiations, the suspect raised the gun and fired around, at which time officers returned fire. The suspect was struck, uh, transferred to the hospital. My understanding right now is in stable condition. McManus says a suspect is in stable condition and no one else was injured. The five officers all have two to five years on the force, one with 13 years experience. They are working with investigators as police say this is all preliminary information and continue to investigate all the details that led up to that shooting. And we're learning more about a man suspected in a mass murder in Julia, Illinois, before taking his own life at a gas station in Italia. 23 year old Romeo Nance is accused of killing eight people. This handgun you see here is the weapon he used to commit at least one of the murders in Juliet. That's according to the Will County Sheriff's Office. We're also told this is the weapon Nance used to take his own life after that run in with law enforcement in Natalia. And we first brought you this story when it happened on January 22nd. This is video from our cameras of that scene playing out earlier this week. Will County detectives arrived in Texas and seized the red Toyota Camry Nance used while he was fleeing Illinois. They say they've been able to recover more evidence from inside that car that will help them in their investigation. And a 16 year old accused of making a fake threat at a local high school now facing charges. The teenager was arrested just two days after the threat put Bernie Heiss, Bernie and Champion High on lockdown. John Paul Barajas explains what police say led up to the arrest. If anybody has information that there is still danger or there's no danger, I'd be happy to hear that. Parents panicked and desperate for answers amid a swarm of law enforcement. <laughs> this was the scene Wednesday after a threat was made at Bernie Champion High School. Police say a second potential threat was also identified at Bernie High School 
leading to both campuses being put on lockdown. The unknown caller said there were multiple bombs in and around the school and that he was also armed with an AR-15 and ready to shoot anybody coming into the school. No bomb, gun, or suspect was found at either school. Bernie Police Chief Steve Perez says an investigation into how that threat was made led them to a 16-year-old former Bernie ISD student who now lives in Bear County. The search warrant was for electronic devices, computers, cell phones, anything uh, that we, we felt was used to push out that message. And so that's what we're in there. But no guns, no bombs, no anything like that was found at his residence. That search warrant was executed Thursday night. By Friday afternoon, the teen was in custody and charged with three felonies, terroristic threat, terrorism, and false report. We know any history of a bad reputation at the ISD of the student here? Or that's still ongoing investigation. That's still part of it. Any criminal history or uh, do you have criminal history that we're aware of? No, sir. Not that we know of at this point. Police have not identified the suspect because that person is a minor. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Just two ramps. It's all left of the Pedro Romero pedestrian bridge on Castroville Road. A truck hit it nearly a year ago this morning in a follow up to our Know My Neighborhood series. Our Avery Everett explains what this means for traffic on the city's inner west side. These ramps to nowhere along Castroville Road will soon be no more. They've been there for so long. It's been nearly a year since the Pedro Romero pedestrian bridge was hit by a truck on February 21st, 2023. That same week, the city removed what it could of the bridge. And in the coming days, the final demolition is scheduled. And neighbors say after nearly a year, these ramps left behind have made them nervous. Look, let me, let me, let's see how easy it is to open. Oh Th this, this should not be like this. Some even calling it a safety hazard. It's just completely open. Wow. And this is, this is not <laughs> secure. A few weeks after the crash, the city created a short term solution. They placed a temporary crosswalk on Castroville Road, but some residents have refused to use it. So this is your first time crossing here? Yes. And yes. why you just avoid this road altogether? Yes, because it's so busy and I think it's just dangerous. But you've lived here all your life? Yes. Yes, yes, but uh, it's just to me, it's a safety issue. The traffic is just horrendous. Wow. Over the last year, the city says it's been waiting on insurance money from the trucking company to move forward. That took some time and also we had to design the demolition. The city says it ultimately ended up receiving just under $1 million. Public Works is using that for the demolition and the design of a permanent four-way traffic signal, soon to replace the bridge. So why not just rebuild the bridge? Well, take a look at it, see how steep it is. The city and neighbors here in this neighborhood have concerns over ADA accessibility. And if they were going to rebuild the bridge, they'd almost have to do an entire rebuild. So that's why neighbors are pushing for a ground level pedestrian crosswalk. Removing these ramps is just step one. It's going to be like a relief for a lot of people. As Public Works says it's planning to start constructing the permanent crosswalk here by the upcoming summer. In the meantime of that construction, the city hired a consultant to do a traffic study on the Castroville Road corridor. In a records request, I was able to get a proposal for that. It would cost the city $70,000 and phase out over five steps. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. And speaking of traffic, TxDOT is postponing this weekend's major closure on the interchange of Loop 1604 and I-10. That causes a big workaround for people going in that area. Officials say the planned closure will be rescheduled for another weekend. Construction crews will still need to place the final beams for a flyover ramp that will connect Loop 1604 East to I-10 West to Bernie. Now to your morning headlines. President Joe Biden making good on his promise to retaliate for the attacks on U.S. troops by Iran-linked militant groups. The U.S. has launched major airstrikes on 85 targets in Iraq and in Syria, the start of what will likely be a series of large strikes on Iranian-backed militias. It's in response to a drone strike on a U.S. military outpost in Jordan that killed three U.S. service members and wounded more than 40 others. The bodies of those service members have since been brought back to the U.S. And U.S. Border Patrol says last week bundles of cocaine washed up on a beach near Corpus Christi. They were found along Padre Island National Seashore by agents. The drugs were wrapped in cellophane and weighed about six pounds each. This isn't the first time this has happened. Last month, about 25 bricks of cocaine worth more than $2 million washed up 
on Boca Chica Beach in Brownsville. Attorney General Ken Paxton has announced a $350 million settlement with Publix Health to resolve investigations into their role in the prescription opioid crisis. Texas will receive $21 million from that settlement. In a statement from the Attorney General's office, there has been more than 20,000 deaths in Texas since 2006 from opioid abuse, addiction, and overdoses. The settlement is the latest in a series of agreements Attorney General Paxton has negotiated to hold the drug industry accountable for the worsening of the national prescription opioid crisis. And the Environmental Protection Agency wants to label nine forever chemicals as hazardous. They are PFAs that take a long time to break down, which is why they are called forever chemicals. These PFAs can be found in hundreds of household items and even in public drinking water systems. Studies have shown they are much more hazardous to health than previously thought and are even more dangerous in much lower concentrations. The EPA's proposal to regulate these PFAs will be open to public comment for 60 days once it is published in the Federal Register. It's 811 and 54 degrees. After the break, we have a good story to bring you the latest developments on a story that we first brought you last week where video showing a man struggling to get down the stairs with his wheelchair and what residents are now saying. 54 degrees outside, yet yeah, those clouds still lingering. Sarah Spivey says we have some few showers here and there in our viewing area, but they're soon will all be moved out just in time for the cattle drive shaping up to be a sunny, beautiful day. She'll have our forecast when we come back. New developments in a story that we first brought to you last week. Finally, some good results. So last week we showed you this video a man struggling to get down the stairs with his wheelchair because the elevator at his apartment complex had been broken for several weeks. We're happy to report after our story aired, it was fixed a few days later. Garrett Berenger went back to those apartments and caught up with neighbors who now have a way to get around again. You take a ride just for kicks? Oh yeah, <laughs> two or three. <laughs> just going up and down until sure they work again. So Opportunity Home told us last week that repairs had started in early January, but one part had been delayed and then it was found another was needed as well. It also told us hotel rooms were offered to the people affected, but everyone wanted to stay put in the complex. As for the reason for the delay, a spokesman with us with you, told us in an email, supply chain issues continue to impact our contractor's ability to get products especially for the creation of custom-made control panels. These are not parts that can just be purchased at a home improvement store, end quote. Well, glad it was fixed. Yeah, most definitely. And I'm glad we got some good rain. We're going to talk about rainfall totals here in just a bit, but I wanted to start with a picture sent in to Case okay. Connect of a beautiful rainbow out there right now as the oh. rain has cleared. And that's from this morning? Clearing. Yes, that's from oh, this morning. I love that. Yeah, so there's a rainbow out there. Let's see if you can find it. Then send in a picture through our Case Connect feature on our weather app or on KSAT.com. And as we take a look at the authority radar right now. You can really see that the bulk of the rain is well east of San Antonio. However, there are a few light showers working their way uh, across areas uh, in northern Bear County and in Comal County here. Uh, you can see as I step to the side, those areas that are really enjoying just a few isolated showers, what's left of the rain in San Antonio. And with some of this activity, there could actually be the potential here for just some very light ice falling, even though, yes, you heard me right, even though uh, it is well above freezing, at the top of the atmosphere, it's quite cold. And so there could be some very light ice falling here as well. We've seen some reports for that. For the most part, though, it is just light rain showers and the last of it, because again, we're going to see clearing skies very quickly. I want to talk, though, for a moment about the amount of rain that we saw overnight. As I zoom out here, anywhere you see these 
yellows. That's two inches of radar estimated rain. You can see that two inches of radar estimated rain fell in between 410 and 1604 here again along this yellow swath from Poteet down to Pleasanton. Lots of rainfall for parts of DeWitt County. In fact, south of Quero, up to five inches of rain has fallen and fell in the overnight hours. Now, where this is all good rain, great rain for uh, those in uh, the agricultural business, where we're seeing drought, the most intense drought, areas from Kerrville down to Lake Hills up toward Bernie, about half an inch to an inch of rain fell. So again, good rain for everybody. Not complaining here. Just uh, it was a little noisy at times in the overnight hours, and we just had some small hail reported and some gusty winds. So for the most part, storms were fairly tame. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we're going to be seeing uh, again clearing skies. We're already looking at clearing skies, rainbows even forming 66 degrees though at noon. Take a look at these winds. Winds are going to be breezy today, especially in the afternoon from the west at about 15 miles per hour. We could see some gusts of up to 30 miles per hour though. We'll be looking at a high of 70 and then temperatures quickly cooling into the 50s tonight. So if you have Saturday night plans bring the jacket with you. It'll be 73 in Del Rio, 75 in Crease of Springs, 75 in Pleasanton, 66 in Kerrville, 69 in Canyon Lake, and 73 in Gonzales. The weather setup, all of the heaviest of the rain is falling out near Houston right now. So if you have travel plans toward Houston, know that you're going to run into some showers and thunderstorms. This is all because of this upper level low pressure system. Behind this, a lot of wind. So winds are going to pick up quite a bit not only this afternoon when we could see gusts of up to 30 miles per hour but especially tomorrow morning we'll see wind gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour that's enough to knock around some lightweight patio furniture. So plan accordingly. Gusty tomorrow and 68 for the high. As we look ahead to the week, it's going to be quiet with cool mornings, comfortable afternoons. Sarah, we've seen a lot of people post to KSAC Connect uh, their rain gauges, how many inches of rain they saw, even some of the impressive lightning. I'm going to show a slideshow of those pictures coming up in a bit. So if you want to submit your pictures on KSAT Connect, do so now. My favorite was the guy with the Tacoma truck that put, I don't know if it was like blow up mattresses. Oh, we'll show that. We'll show that. It was good. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sending those pictures. Keep sending Absolutely. them in. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. It is 820 and 54 degrees. I don't know. It went away. Yeah, it's, it's in the 50s. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, February is Black History Month, and a new exhibit that honors enslaved people opening today in Sutherland Springs. The exhibit is a display of quilt squares that represent the lives of the men and the women who were enslaved at the Polly Plantation, known as Whitehall in Wilson County. The quilt squares are used because there are no photos. PhD scholar Melinda Creech is behind the exhibit. There are 29 quilt squares with a description of each enslaved person's life. The display is a permanent exhibit in Polly Room at the Sutherland Springs Historical Museum. And right now at the Pearl, a San Antonio artist, Caldrick Doe, has unveiled his mural titled The Soulful Love. The mural examines Black History Month with a powerful depiction of a mother and child. The mural will be up until the end of the month located just outside the Culinary Institute if you would like to visit and take a look. And you can keep up with all of our Black History coverage and events happening this month celebrating Black History by scanning this QR code that's on your screen. We'll be right back. Let's rodeo San Antonio because rodeo season is here and don't forget the Old West will come alive downtown this weekend, starting this morning for its annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive for the remainder of the morning. It's going to be all about the Cattle Drive and the kickoff for all the rodeo festivities. We'll be checking in with SA Live's Mike, Fiona, Jen, David Elder to see what they're up to as they get ready for some parade coverage. You can expect to watch all the bands, but let's go ahead and check in. We have a live look. At the bump shot there, it's 828 and 55 degrees. There they are. That looks like a rodeo clown there. We got the rodeo clown. 
This is Mike and Fiona's location. They are under I-35 as they are getting ready for, there, there they are, wave. Hey Mike, hey Fiona, y'all look fantastic in your cowboy hats. Everyone looking good out there. We're gonna check in with them when we come back. Saturday. Good morning. good morning. Happy Saturday. We've got more rainbow pictures, Sarah. I love waking up to a good rainbow picture. Me too. And here's a look out in near Bernie and Leon Springs. That's where that rainbow is right there from this person's perspective. Let's take a look at some rain gauges, though. This is South Bear County. Almost two inches of rainfall, almost an inch and a half in the Alamo Ranch area. And uh, earlier this morning, there was even uh, a little bit of what we call grouple in meteorology, which is basically snowflakes that sort of melt as they hit the ground. You can kind of see that uh, along the stairs there. This was out near the Stone Oak area. And then this is the picture Sarah Costa was talking about before the break. This person was prepared for the worst, okay? They wanted to make sure their truck was prepared. We think those might be air mattresses. We could be wrong. We don't know. But all in all, there was really only some nickel-sized hail in place places last night. Here's what's left of that. We've got some very light rain showers up in northern Bear County at the moment. This is just some ground clutter being reported out there near Somerset, but this is the area of that very light rain, perhaps even some grout pull up there as well. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, coming up in the forecast, we're going to take a detailed look at rainfall totals, about half an inch to an inch and a half all across South Central Texas. I'll show you some neighborhood amounts and how that could potentially help out the drought situation. It's going to be a sunny and dry weekend for us, but comes with a bit of a caveat. It is going to be windy. We're going to see gusts of up to 40 to 50 miles per hour tomorrow. So coming up in the forecast, I will tell you what you need to know to be prepared for those gusty winds tomorrow morning. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Love that that weather cleared up just in time for the Western Heritage Kettle Drive Parade. And you know, we're just a few days away from the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and we're looking forward to all things rodeo and the cattle drive happening in just a couple of hours. And that's where we find SA Live's Mike and Fiona. They are there now at I-35 in Houston. I know it's loud out there, guys. How's it going? Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, first of all, what, what Sarah was just talking about, the sun yeah. is shining bright out here. It just it just started to beam into our face. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is just a lot of excitement. Yes, this year's parade is going to be bigger and better than ever, and we are going to be going right down Houston Street. Yeah, so okay. all the, uh, all the side, everything's been set up there. As you can see, some of the streets are blocked off as of right now. They've got the 5K that's going to be going on, and then the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive is going to be starting, and we are right underneath I-35 right now and all of the goosenecks, the semis, everybody, Texas A&M, their mounted uh, cavalry just pulled on in here and this is, yeah, I've never been down here before. This is so, <laughs> so amazing to see. Well, yes, and as you mentioned, you know, we're starting to see the, you know, the horses for all the entries arrive um, and of course we are waiting for the Longhorns from Kimball Cattle Ranch. Yes, indeed. And right over here, speaking of A&M, for all you Aggies out there, there they are in their bus, just pulling up. And of course, they are gonna be in the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, 17th year for this. And we've been doing it for, for a while about, as well. Yeah. About I seven years now. Seven or eight years, yes. And if you take a look at this patch right here, look at that, 75 years. Year, 75th anniversary for the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo and throughout the, the whole time it's all about the, the scholarships a lot of folks have a lot of fun too but more than 250 million dollars of scholarships throughout and, the years and about what 18,000 kids have benefited from that just last year just last year yep so we're going cool. about 75 countries participate so it, it is definitely an international event and also they've kind of been crunching numbers lately as far as the economic impact to the city of San Antonio, which of course is in the tens of millions of dollars each and every year with all the folks that, that come on in here. And of course, it is such a great time. That's gonna be kicking off 
on uh, Thursday, yeah. and we are doing something a little bit different. You know, we have had the the honor, the privilege of being in parades before, and of course of hosting this parade. We're doing both today, simultaneously. We are, we are doing both today. We are going to be walking in front of the Longhorn all the way to our spot there at Houston and Jefferson. Yes, indeed. And we have gotten the messages more than once saying, you can't stop. Yes. Don't stop Don't because stop. you've got about 75 Longhorn cattle behind you. Yep. Don't worry, we won't be stopping. Keep, but Keep up, Mike. <laughs> it, it, it is going to be a whole lot of fun. So we start broadcasting at 11 o'clock. Sarah. Mike and Fiona, thank you so much. And like Mike said, we're going to be checking in with Mike and Fiona, David Elder, Jen, all throughout the morning until 10 a.m., and then followed by Texas Eats at 10. And then, of course, we'll bring you that parade live on all of our platforms here on KSAT 12 and streaming as well, starting at 11. Now to the latest in the DA's involvement with an Austin-based criminal justice reform group called the Wren Collective. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar now distancing himself from the district attorney's office after learning about the DA's involvement. So KSAT received 200 plus pages of text messages between the group's founder, DA Joe Gonzalez, and his first assistant. So those messages include conversations on everything from specific cases to press conferences to policies such as bail reform. Now we spoke with to the DA about these messages on Tuesday during the six o'clock newscast. Some of the messages also mentioned Sheriff Javier Salazar including his investigation into migrants flown from San Antonio to Martha's Vineyard. In one of the texts dated back on September 19th of 2022, Run Collective founder Jessica Brand sent Gonzalez and first assistant DA Christian Hendrickson a link to a story about the sheriff's plan to investigate the flights. The DA goes on to say Salazar was interested in doing a joint press conference and goes into detail about their conversation. So in a letter to the DA from the sheriff dated February 1st, the sheriff says he's seen the stories on the Wren Collective. The letter says in part, quote, I know nothing of this convert. I know nothing of this organization, but seeing some of these things discussed among you all gives me pause on seeking your advice on legal matters moving forward. It goes on to say, Joe, you seem to be quoting me on things I intended to be confidential, end quote. And a second letter was sent to the Wren Collective from an attorney representing the sheriff, calling on the group to, quote, cease and desist from using the sheriff or BCSO to, quote, further your agenda. We continue to reach out to the Wren Collective, but we have not heard back at this time. And Sheriff Salazar also declined to comment. However, the DA sent us this statement, quote, I have responded to the sheriff directly and clarified my role as the criminal district attorney of Bear County as it relates to potential prosecution of criminal matters. I now consider this matter closed, end quote. We've also asked to speak with first assistant DA involved in those text discussions, Christian Hendrickson, and the DA spokesperson, Pete Gallego, replied to that request via email, saying in part, quote, DA Joe Gonzalez answered detailed questions about the issue when he was interviewed with Steve Spreester, Spreester and Myra Arthur. He was clear, direct, and forthcoming in his responses. Neither he nor any other employee of the office can add further clarity to a simple effort to supplement the knowledge and expertise in our office in order to improve the administration of justice, end quote. He also criticized KSAT's coverage. And then you can read the full response as well as watch our reports on the Wren Collective, including KSAT's interview with county's most senior court judge, Judge Ron Run Hell, also questioning the relationship between the district attorney's office and the Wren Collective. Of course, you can find all of that right now on KSAT.com. Now to the latest on the border, the U.S. Senate has reached a deal on a border bill with more details of the policy coming sometime this weekend. So the measure is aimed at overhauling the asylum system at the U.S.-Mexico border. It would be part of a larger national security package that would send funding to Ukraine, Israel and other allies. Republicans in both houses say they don't like the idea of compromising on border security. So it's unclear whether the larger bill will pass Congress. Senators want to hold a test vote on the package next week. It's 841 and 55 degrees. 
Let's check back in at the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Of course, that parade does not start until 11 a.m. It's one of the many events kicking off rodeo season. Never mind, we're not going to see them, but we'll see them later in the show. We're going to check in with SE Live's Jen Strusky in a bit. 55 degrees at 841. Man, did it clear up this morning? You can see some of those clouds still lingering. Sarah Spivey says it's shaping up to be a beautiful day for the cattle drive, and we're going to feel the wind tomorrow. She'll explain. We've been following the cattle drive this morning and just spoke with Mike Osterhage and Fiona out at I-35 in Houston. But now we're going to check in with Another SA Live host, Jen Tobias Strusky. She's near the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum. Jen, how's it looking out there? Hi, Sarah. Oh, we're so excited. This is the 17th year for the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And I have Chris Derby, the Chief Marketing Officer for the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Hello, Chris. How excited are you? I'm so excited. This is great. This is great weather and we're ready to have a great parade. So let's talk a little bit about the history here, because I think this is so cool. We try to relive history, really. Yeah, definitely. This is the original way the cattle came down to the Alamo from South Texas. So we're excited to reenact that again right here in San Antonio. What's your favorite part? Honestly, the, the Longhorns coming down. You can't be at the very front of that parade with those Longhorns coming down the street. You can't get that anywhere else in the country. Yes, even just seeing photos of that, like, I mean, right here in the middle of downtown, it is so awesome. And you've been with the rodeo for how long? Now, I've been out here for about five years, and, and it's just been a great, great part of my entire life. Yes, so you told me the dirt's going in Monday. Speaking of the rodeo, Spurs last game today, and that's, I mean, rodeo road trip. So it's it's happening. It, this, this takes a lot of preparation. It totally is. Yeah, it takes about seven hours to put the dirt in. At 6 a.m. Monday morning, the real dirt comes in, and then the Cowboys hit the dirt on Thursday. All right, well, we're going to have a lot of people probably watching at home ready to come here and check it out. Um, they can see you guys right here. You can see the KSAC crew over there. They're getting set up. They're all so great. All the people behind the scenes. We will be out here. So if you're going to come down, come say hi. Thank you, Chris. We'll send it back to you, Sarah. Yeah, fun to see people like Dave and Frank that we don't get to see on TV all that often. Yeah, those are our engineers. They're setting up our Working behind the scene for our show. <laughs> it's so funny. They have no clue they're on camera. No, they don't. Well, they'll watch it again on yeah. their DVR, I guess. Hey, we got some good rain last night, Sarah. It was thundering. Yeah, it, it felt like ranch weather. You know, ranch, like light, okay. Lightning. I ranch didn't know weather. there was a certain <laughs> type know. of weather. So it was a rolling thunderstorm. I will, I will go ahead and say that's probably not going to go in my meteorology channels. I'm sorry, okay. Sarah. Maybe, maybe <laughs> think of something else, okay? okay. All right, to take a look at today's clouds and temperatures. You can see that we're still seeing some lingering cloud cover behind the main area of the system that's moving out near Houston right now. But skies are starting to clear. It's 55 degrees in San Antonio, 52 in Bernie, 52 Rio Medina, 50 55, 56 rather in New Braunfels, 56 at Stinson, 51 in Kerrville. Now we are still dealing with some lingering light rain showers in northern Bear County here. You can see just a few passing light rain showers generally north of 1604 and a light rain shower out near the SeaWorld area. It's been interesting because it's pretty cold up in the upper levels of the atmosphere, but it's well above freezing down here at the surface. We have had some reports of grouple, which has fallen from the sky. Grouple is basically snow that melts a little bit as it falls down to the down to the surface that would be an off chance for you to get that and it'd be more of a wow factor sort of thing really the benefit has been the rain last night it was storms were loud at times absolutely but as i'm showing you the the drought you can see that there's an area of extreme drought across the hill country generally across this area we got anywhere from a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch of rainfall that will certainly help out the drought situation but take a look at these rainfall amounts closer to San Antonio. At the airport, 85 hundredths of an inch of rain. Alamo Ranch, an inch and a half. And nearly an inch in Selma, uh, more than an inch of rain. Chavano Park, two inches of rain out near Adkins, nearly two inches of rain near Seguin and out near Smiley. And then off west toward Del Rio late last night, we had about a half an inch of rain, uh, close to half an inch of rain fall out near Laughlin Air Force Base. The rain is a good thing, 
but not when it comes to the pollen count because molds usually spike and that's exactly the case today. Molds are high past 5,000. Mountain cedar though has come down because of the rain. Mountain cedar is low. We are heading to the end of mountain cedar season usually comes to an end by Valentine's Day. As we take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, few lingering showers as I just showed you, but skies will gradually be clearing by noon. It'll be mostly sunny and 66, 70 degrees for the high temperature today, right around three four o'clock and then temperatures are going to cool into the 50s after sunset. So bring the jacket with you for Saturday night plans. As for highs in your neighborhood, 66 Kerrville, 69 Lost Maples, 73 Floresville, 71 in Seguin and New Braunfels, 73 in Divine. It is going to get pretty windy. Now today we'll see gusts of up to about 30 miles per hour. That's just the appetizer. Winds will calm tonight, but by tomorrow mid morning through about lunch, we're going to have wind gusts of up to 45 to 50 miles per hour. That's something to keep note of, especially if you have lightweight patio furniture. Winds will calm somewhat by Sunday evening, but it's also going to be breezy on Monday. In the week ahead, we're going to have cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. Love to show more of your KSAC Connect pictures coming up in the next half hour. We'll be back right after this. So we have Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Hulu, Paramount Plus, ESPN Plus. Brady Duran's bills to keep up with all of his must-see shows add up, but he doesn't want to miss out. If we can still watch what we want for less, I'm all is. Let's get to it. Five ways to shrink your streaming bill. First, you can become a service hopper. And that's subscribing to a service, binging all the shows you want to watch, and then canceling before moving on to a different service. And there are apps and websites like Just Watch and Real Good that can help you keep track of all the shows and movies you want to see, and then get alerts when they become available on one of the services you use. Number two, consider a cheaper tier. Not long ago, streaming services offered only one price option. Now, many have added cheaper plans, some with commercials. For example, Disney Plus Premium is $13.99 a month. The basic plan is $7.99 a month. Number three, keep track of all of your streaming subscriptions by putting them on one credit card, which leads to tip number four. Each month, review every service you're paying for and determine if you can justify the cost. This can also help you catch any sneaky price hikes. Finally, an obvious way to save money is to use a free streaming app like Pluto TV, the Roku channel, or Tubi. The freebies have classics and movies and some original content. They also have ads. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. This corner, we got the monarch butterflies uh, representing the migration. Uh, when we're done here with the sky, we're going to have uh, 53, 53 stars representing each uh, person that passed away in the uh, event here on Cantana Road. Beautiful monarchs there. A powerful mural is being installed at Mission County Park to commemorate the 2022 migrant tragedy on Quintana Road. Three artists were commissioned to collaborate on the art installation, each of them sharing why this is so important to them. My parents are migrants. I'm first generation born. They all make those sacrifices to, in hopes of a better future. My parents came from uh, Saltillo in Monterrey, Mexico to come here for a new opportunity and um, I owe that sacrifice and that journey to them. This is just one incident. There's thousands, you know, thousands of others. And, um, you know, I kind of want this to represent the ones that are not seen also. The Luminaria mural installation will be on permanent display at Mission County Park if you'd like to check it out. We'll be right back.